So, I'm back. I'm back. Guys, sorry, sorry. I know what a lot of you guys are about to say. Where have you been? Where is the uploads? Where is my videos? I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The past week, I had some personal stuff that I was dealing with. But now I'm back. I'm back now. Uh, and the consistent videos are back. I'm sorry that... I didn't talk about Barcelona, I didn't talk about Real Madrid, and trust me, there's a lot, a lot, a lot to talk about Real Madrid and Barcelona, and anything else. But today's video is specifically about Real Madrid, and that is what we have learned so far in the first month of action of Real Madrid. Real Madrid have played, of course, four games. The five games they've played. They've played five games, they won three, drew two. And won one trophy. Well, what have we learned from that? That's a lot of things to talk about. Players, system, manager, signings, injuries. A lot of things to talk about. Before I go any further, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And for all of your loyal, loyal subscribers that's been showing love and texting me and messaging me. Where's the videos? We miss you, X, Y and Z. I appreciate you. Mucho, mucho, mucho gracias for everyone. But I'm back, man. I'm back. But yeah. Like, share, subscribe, and comment your own thoughts on whether you agree or disagree with what I'm about to say. Okay, listen, where I mean, where can we start with Real Madrid? Because there, there, there's a lot of talking points about Real Madrid. We have learned a lot about Real Madrid over the past month with so many things, so many things. And of course, I think the biggest talking point is, and the best way to start, in my opinion, is the new system. That Real Madrid is now playing and trying to play. Real Madrid has played, in total, we've played five games. Which means we've played over ten halves. Whether that's first half, second half. We've played over ten halves. Can you guys be honest? How many of those ten halves has been actually good performing, perform, good performing halves? Like good displays that we've seen from the team. Not individually, but from the team. Out of all 10 games, that's only been three halves. Only three. And that is the second half against Atlanta. The second half against Real Valladolid. And the second half against Real Betis. We have struggled to start all the last five games on a positive note in the first half. Because there's so many miscommunication, so many different... Everyone trying to play in different positions... The lack of midfield with the attack. There's so much space. No one is really willing to create. And most importantly, no one is willing to move for each other self selflessly. Yes, yeah, selflessly. Yeah, that's the, that's the right word. Self. No one's willing to selflessly move to create space for the other player. In the second half, once Carlo Ancelotti chats to his players in a dressing room, we see a bounce back. We see a bit more of a, you know what, guys, let's lock in now. Betis, we saw that. Real Madrid, we saw that. And Atlanta, we saw that. Where we literally won all three games in the second half. One thing that I don't like is how we start the games. Because we need to start the games on a positive note. We are currently now four points behind Barcelona. Barcelona are playing. We'll talk about Barcelona. I'll make a specific video about Barcelona. Where I'll give you what we've learned about Barcelona so far to start the season. But in terms of Real Madrid, the first thing that we need to do, that's the first things that we've learned so far, is we have to start the game on a positive note. We have to start the game with more urgency because we, we're we lacking urgency early on. I feel like we've, you know what, it's a 90 minutes game. Maybe let's just try to play the best and then second half, let's lock in. We can't have that mindset. We cannot have that mindset. Because sometimes it's not going to work out. Against Rayo, it didn't work out. We conceded early on. We can't have that mindset where, you know what, let's just maybe recover in the second half and let's give our best performance in the second half. We can't do that. We need to give show urgency from the first minute, show intent with the first minute, show intensity with the first minute because we're not showing that at all. So that's, that's the first thing that we've learned. The second thing that we've learned is, of course, the relationship between Kylian Mbappe, Vinicius Jr. and Jude Bellingham. When I went away, so the last time I uploaded was the video Real Madrid against Real Valladolid, and we, of course, won that game. Since I've been away, Real Madrid just played two games which I haven't reacted to. They played a game against Rayo where we drew 1-1. And they played a game against Betis where we won that game. One thing that I've realised with Real Madrid fans, whether that's on social media or even online, 
what social media online is the same thing <laughs> on social media is they are very very reactionary very reactionary because after the game against uh, Ryan Vericano where we drew 1-1 everyone no, no it wasn't Ryan Vericano who, who the hell did we play against in the third in, in the third game we what it wasn't Rayo let me check man who the hell did we play against it wasn't like Barca played against Rayo they beat Rayo who did we play well, I forgot. Uh, so we played. Uh, let me check. Let me check. Because it wasn't Ryo. I know it wasn't Ryo. Because I remember Ryo played. So we. Oh, Las Palmas. Duh. Las Palmas. So after we, of course, played at Las Palmas, the main takeaways, which I saw from far, I was watching from far. I, I watched both games. I was watching from far. I was, you know what? You know, them ones where. Observe, but don't give your, uh, your your opinion. I was observing from far. I was just I was I was taking notes. A lot of you guys were criticizing Vinicius Junior. You guys called Vinicius Junior a selfish player. Made no sense to me. You guys were criticizing Fede. A lot of people after the last performance game said Fede Fede cannot work at Real Madrid. Fede does not have the, the ingredients or the components to become a great player at Real Madrid. Fede Fede is very limited. Cool. Chimeni Chimeni is a bad player. Chimeni should not be starting for Real Madrid. Okay, cool. And bad place a flop. In bad place finish. X, Y, and Z. Cool. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Okay. Militao. Militao is not the same player that we had before. The, the relationship between Militao and Rudiger is not great. No, Militao needs to go. Uh, he needs to go. He needs to find a new player. Cool. Three days later, against Real Betis on Sunday, Fede is the best midfielder in the world. And Mbappe is, Mbappe is back to what he was. Vinny is the most selfless player. How can he give the penalty? Look at him. That's a great leader. Great captain. Rudiger, perfect. Chimeni is back to what he knows. Like, we knew this before. Why are you guys overreacting over one game? Don't become those people. Like, we all know about Chimeni. Chimeni not having, having a bad performance doesn't mean he's a bad player. Fede, Fede wasn't even that bad against Las Palmas. Let's be real. He was one of our better players against Las Palmas. I don't understand the whole Fede thing. The Vinny, the fact that some of you have the audacity to call Vinicius Jr. a selfish player? Have you guys not been watching Vinny the past three years at Real Madrid? You do know Vinny was the one that recruited Mbappe to come to Real Madrid. So why would he be selfish to him? You guys looked at one little clip, one little video, where Mbappe was asking for the ball. But that just... That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't show anything that, it, oh, he's selfish. That just shows, cool. There is a great understanding between the two and b that both of them are trying to gain the understanding. Ap apologies. Both of them are trying to gain the understanding and it just shows both of them want the best for the team because they care. The fact that, that Mbappe was asking for the ball, Vinny's asking for that means they care. That means they want to win. And that just shows the willingness to win. That's not a bad thing. You guys are... Ridiculous! The, 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 the what I saw after the game against Las Palmas, and then the Betis completely different reaction. Tremendous! Is this what? What kind of? What kind of? What is this, bro? Fix up! Honestly, all of you, fix up! All of you, you know who you are. You know who you are. Fix up! But in terms of the players, the players, in my opinion, the first five games we're still trying to learn the system, and I think it is very evident and is very highlighted what we've saw for the first five games that the idea of playing 4-3-3 does not make sense at all it does not make sense at all and i and i saw some reports of course carl ancelotti is going back to the diamond formation is going back to the 4-1-1 uh, to uh, um to the 4-4-2 which i think is the best way forward because i think when vinicius jr and mbappe understands each other which they did in the second half against betis and they did again in the second half against Real Madrid, i think a lot of good things will come one thing about Real Madrid, and that's, that's the word of the episode, because every video, that's a word. That's the key word of the episode. The word of the episode of Real Madrid is patience. It's patience. We are still trying to make it out. We're still trying to figure it out. And it's going to take time. It's going to take time. I'm not nervous. I'm not, I'm not scared. I don't have any doubts that this will not work out. I'm very sure it will work out. The question is when it will work out. And the answer to the question of when is when Jude Bellingham comes back and Cameron Vinga comes back and Carlo Ancelotti figures out the right system to play all of those players. Because Rodrigo had a great game against Betis, but is Rodrigo the answer to the system? No, he isn't. 
I made it very clear before the season started, I made it very clear that the, our best team heading into next season is the diamond formation, which involves all the four midfielders of Chimeni as a six, Kamavinga as an eight, Fede as an eight, Jude as a ten, and of course two strikers up front, of course, of course Vinny and Mbappe. That is our best team in terms of balance-wise and system-wise and individually-wise. I'm not hating on Rodrigo. A lot of people said, well, you hate on Rodrigo. No, I'm not. I'm not hating. I, I love Rodrigo. I love him. What he's done to Real Madrid, absolutely baller. But in terms of what we need, in terms of a balance to this team, Camavinga is the answer. But it's just unfortunate, which is the third thing that we've learned. Our luck for this season has been disgustingly bad. Bad, bro. Like we, to start off the season, I don't think we recovered and I don't think we understood. I don't think Paris and Ancelotti understood the miss of Tony Cruz. I think they saw, oh, okay, Tony Cruz is missing. We can just bring another, we can just bring Rodrigo. Tony Cruz saying goodbye, which I did say as well towards the end of last season. I did say the loss of uh, of Tony Cruz is going to be highlighted a lot more than the gain of Mbappe, which is showing already. Everything I've said is coming true. So I don't think Ancelotti and Perez understood how important the loss of Tony Cruz is. I think they just thought he was just another player. Clearly he's not. But the fact that Tony Cruz is gone, Jude got injured, Camavinga got injured, our players, Mendy's got injured, and Chemeni got a knock, Sabah is now out for eight weeks, we got injury problems. We got a lot of injury problems. And the thing is, we've learned out the midfielders. Nico Paz has been learned out. Mario Martin has been learned out. Literally, uh, our centre back, Juan Martin, has got, got ACL, ACL injury. So we've got a lot of problems within this team and a lot of injuries within this team, but we didn't make any additions to the team. That's why playing the right place is very crucial. Because now, I mean, going to such a dad, we've got Chimeni, Chimeni, Fede, Modric and Arda. We've got four midfielders against against um, Sociedad away from home to Anueta, which isn't an easy ground. It's not an easy ground to go to. So that's why Pep said it very, very well. And I don't know if you guys have seen what Pep said literally um, after the game against West Ham, which I think relates to our season. Pep said the season doesn't start on the 13th of August. The season, the real season starts after the international break. Which means everything that we've done before, which is the four games that we've played and the Super Cup, that's all pre-season. And I kind of agree with what Pep is saying. Because I feel like, especially, a pre-season doesn't really tell a lot of things. Especially for our case. Because our pre-season and our, our actual regular season is complete two different seasons. Because a lot of players were missing the pre-season. Look, compare our team to the pre-season and to the first game against Atalanta. It's a completely different team. Because Mbappe was out, Vinny was out, uh, uh, Jude was out, kind of thing. Everyone was out. So it, it was a completely different team. But our preseason really and truly was Atlanta and the first four league games. That's our preseason. And I hope for Carlo Ancelotti's sake, he will now assess, he's now seen the four games, the five games, apologies, four league games. He's seen the four league games. He's watched all the tapes of the four league games. And he now understands, all right, cool. This is my right team, which is a diamond formation. And this is the right players. Once everyone is back and healthy, this is the team that I want to put forward. He now understands that the relationship between Mbappe and Vini will improve. And both of them need to talk to each other. Both of them need to move selflessly around for each other. Create movement between the two of you. That's the most important thing. Because let's be real, our most dangerous attack will go through both of them. Arda Gula is the fourth thing that we've learned, in my opinion. Arda Gula is an important piece to this team. Because Arda Gula needs to start. I'm, I'm not sure why he never started against uh, Betis. Sabah started. He didn't play bad as well. Because I've seen people say he's had a bad game. He didn't play bad. He just didn't... The thing is with Sabayas, which is not a criticism to him. When you play for Real Madrid, it's not good enough to have an average performance. Sabayas did not do anything bad against Betis. But at the same time, he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't do anything good. And that's what you need to do with Real Madrid. You can't not provide anything to the team. For you to start for Real Madrid, you need to provide something. In order for you to start, give me something. 
So if you can't give me anything, then what what use are you? And that's the problem with Sabayas. He doesn't have any sort of X factor into him compared to Aragula. Because the game against Las Palmas, Aragula came on, the game changed completely. He was the reason why we got the penalty. He's the reason why the, the free kick, his set piece delivery, which I did say to you guys, in terms of the best delivery taker, is Aragula. Are we. The game against Las Palmas was another demonstration of that. So Arda Gula needs to be one of our main, most important players. He can't be a backup player. We can't have him the same way we did have last season. No, he needs to have a bigger impact. Endrick is another player that, which I want to talk about. He needs to have a bigger role next season as well. We can't, no, sorry, not next season, after the international break. We can't just give him the last five minutes. Because every time he comes on, he is, he provides runs bro he provides something different to Mbappe is he's more he's more willing to run from the uh, uh, um, uh, behind the defence which we did the moment he came against Betis boom off the first second Brian Diaz found him and Brian Diaz literally great great pass free pass and gr great chance for Endrick of course missed it great save but that's what he does we need to bring we can't bring him in the last few minutes last three minutes last five minutes no 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 no. he needs to start at least 15-20 minutes before bring him on the 70 minute bro give him something else Brahim Diaz is another player which I want to talk about. Brahim Diaz, which I, I love him so much, but he's not a starter level player. He's not a starter level. Like when he plays, Brahim Diaz is one of those players, yeah. When he plays, compared to what he is off the bench, is two completely different players. It's like with Arsenal. If you guys watch Arsenal, Trossard. When Trossard plays, he doesn't give you anything. But when he comes off the bench, damn, he gives you something. Brian Diaz, again, one of those players that when he starts, it's different to when he comes off the bench. Because when he comes off the bench, he brings energy. Because he brings energy against Ty Lex. He brings creativity. Runs, he's willing, he's a progressor of the ball, he's a carrier of the ball. He takes the ball and is willing to turn around and drive with it. Which, we don't have a lot of midfielders who can do that. That's why Brian Diaz, important person to bring off the bench. But... In my opinion, the five, the fifth thing that we've learned so far with Real Madrid, our best player so far, no other than who I said he, he was our best player last season, in Fede Valverde. And how many times does Fede need to prove to you guys and show you guys how good he is for you guys to realise how important he is? When I, made, when I ranked him as our best midfielder last season and the year before, and the year before, and the year before, when I, when I ranked him as our best midfielder, our best player last season, I didn't rank him because I love Fede. For me, I, I, I absolutely, I, I think I'm his number one fan. It wasn't because of that. I just understand his importance to this Real Madrid team is so, 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 so crucial. I don't think the casuals doesn't know. But you Madrid fans should know how important he is, especially now with, with no Tony Cruz. Because he is the defensive stability. He is the midfield balance. He is the one that drives the ball every time. Bro, Fede Valverde is second in La Liga with the most drives from his back line to the final third with 3.2. Insane. Absolute insane. That is what he does. He provides the balance from the defense to the attack with so much ease. He is like Tony Cruz on cracks. He's got the control, in my opinion, which a lot of people does not give him credit for. He's got the control. He's got the passing ability. It's not, of course, on the same level as Tony Cruz, but he's got that in his locker. But at the same time, brother, the guy can ball carry for days and he does not get tired. Against Batiste, he was literally running back at the 92nd minute to pretty much um, uh, um, to intercept someone and he did it and then boom, drove, went past th three or four players and passed it to pretty much Mbappe on the left-hand side. That's what he does, bro. So can you please put some respect on his name? He's not just a normal player. Because I saw a lot of reactions after the last Palmas game. People saying, oh, he's just another piece. We should bench him. Which he's not He's not the person. Are you crazy for you to even have the audacity to say that? Put some respect on his name, bro. By far, and I repeat, by far our best player so far to enter to start the season. But guys, I'm back, like I said. This is just what we've learned from Real Madrid. We had a great game against Betis. Much better second half performance. Mbappe finally ended his drought. Of course, scored two goals. Vinny was amazing that game. Rodrigo created some chances. He was more... 
He was in the in the first half. He, he was it was on the right hand side. Didn't get anything. He made he then towards the end of the first half he moved a bit centrally, and that's when second half he started very well move in the middle, and that's where he he of course created and played very well. Mbappe find like I said, Mbappe. I think I hope for Mbappe's sake that those two goals will now unlock everything. It's now it's gonna the game's gonna come to him naturally because I did feel like against Las Palmas and against Betis in the first half he was taking. Shots which he's not used to taking, but because he was, I think he was desperate. He was very desperate to get his first goal in La Liga, which he finally now has. The pastor from Fede, brother, brother, achi, amigo, hermano. Did you see that pass from Fede, the back heel? Are you trying to tell me he doesn't have the creativity? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, bro. But like I said, I think for all the Madrid fans out there, just karma. Karma, be patient. We are in a, I feel like we are not in a as bad position and a bad situation as you guys are making it seem like. I feel like once we understand each other and once we figure the whole thing out, we will be unstoppable. The question is, that that's the biggest question. The, the question is, I hope injuries doesn't impact our season because so far it's looking like it. And secondly, I hope Ancelotti figures it out sooner rather than later. If he does it after the international breaks, then I have no doubts that we can win the La Liga. La Liga is still long to, it's still way way long to go, bro. La Barcelona started last season incredibly, and you you saw what happened. We won we won the league. So don't lose hope. It's been it's only been four games. It's a, it's a long 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 season. So like I said, karma, be patient, is a long season. I still have a lot of lot of confidence in this team. We just need to figure some some things out. And once we do, we'll, we'll be unstoppable. But like I said, guys, I'm back. So like, share, subscribe. More videos coming out soon. I'm going to do another video like this for Barcelona. And I'm going to give my Champions League reaction and, oh, and, and everything else. But yeah, man, like, share, subscribe, comment your own thoughts. And I'll see you soon. Peace.